What is up amigos? Today we're talking about knackered ducks. And this is actually a very interesting concept because knackered ducks are there to bring air in from the outside into the car. But they actually originated on airplanes, that's how they were invented. But they didn't uh, succeed in airplanes because they didn't provide enough air at enough high pressure for the engine to operate as what they wanted it to. But on cars, they work very well. So there's one major reason why NACA ducks are featured on a lot of cars. For example, the Ferrari F40, the Lamborghini Countach, the 1996 Dodge Viper, and the 1971 Mustang, for example, are high performance cars that have NACA ducks. And the main reason why they have NACA ducks as opposed to other types of air inlets, like a scoop, for example, is because NACA ducks are low drag. So if you look at, I've drawn a couple pictures here and I'll explain what they are, but for a typical air, for a typical um, car, they might have a scoop coming up if they want to get more air in. That's what they do in, in airplanes as well. But that increases the drag greatly because you have now this geometry popping up into the flow and that creates a wake behind it potentially. With the knack and ducks, that's not the case. So let's say we are looking down on the front of the car, so the hood. And you're looking at there, and for example, in this picture for the F40, and you have these little curved bits, and sometimes they do join up the front, sometimes not. And the air comes along here and goes into it. So they, these walls diverge out a little bit, and then you have a surface on top that then seals the rest of the car. So now the flow is going underneath, getting sucked in into the engine bay and doing whatever, whatever you want. So why do we use these knackered ducts in general? How are they designed? So the first thing is we know that the, this surface here that comes down, so the air is coming along here, this surface curves down quite gently. And there's a very good reason why it curves down quite gently instead of just like coming straight down like this. And that's because you want the flow to stay attached over this surface. If you have a very steep surface or some sort of discontinuity, you would then result in having some sort of separation occurring somewhere in this region. And that means that the air that's coming in is now a slow moving flow, has less energy. And you also usually reduce how much flow you're getting in there as well. So having a gradually reducing, a gradually um, curved slope helps prevent that. Now, another thing that's important is this recovery, like this recovery surface here, where now we have the rest of the car behind here. Now, I've drawn this as a straight flat plate. But many of you who know aerodynamics will know that, well, if I have a straight flat plate here and we have flow coming down here, there's going to be a bit of flow curvature as well over here as well as before it starts to straighten up. So that means that this edge here is now being exposed to some sort of angle of attack. And we know that flat plates are not good at pretty much any non-zero degree angle of attack, like above one or two degrees they'll start to stall. So you get massive stall occurring here. And again, you get a lot of low energy flow here and that's reducing how much flow you're coming into the engine and the pressure of it. So we don't want that. So what we do is we can round this a little bit so that now this is far less sensitive to, and we can join it up if we really like, far less sensitive to angles of attack. So we can go to five, 10 degrees and it's still fine. So that's important for that surface here. Now in terms of these walls here and how they sort of curve out. Why do they do this? So this is actually a very complicated thing. First of all, we have the flow coming along here. And generally speaking, if we just had a straight inlet, so these walls went straight like this, we would get some air and that, that's fine. But if you wanna get more air, you can curve these walls. And what happens is the flow comes along here and as it hits around here, it'll start to rotate in and on this side as well. Now, because they're rotating in, if you think about, let's say you have the scoop and you have these vortices rotating in, they're inducing flow down into it. So there's flow going into the page here that these vortices are now grabbing and pulling down into this duct area. So what these vortices are doing is they're pulling more air into this NACA duct and going into the engine now. That's because of these vortices are rotating in this particular way. And as the walls curve out more, that helps facilitate that. Now, in addition, after we get these vortices forming and we're kind of down here now, the curvature helps move these vortices to the sides of the wall. And the reason why this is important is because these vortices are generally low energy, so we don't want to ingest them too much. So we sort of move them around to the outer a little bit, they hug the wall, and this allows more fresh, faster moving flow to come in as well. So these vortices are very important that way. One thing that I want to mention is the angle of these walls. So they do curve, 
but generally around about 20, 30 degrees or so is when you start to get these vortices forming and then you get that beneficial effect. So those are NACA ducts and how they work. And that is the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and click the subscribe button. And this one, peace amigos.